Even though he wasn't an original founding member of the team, Captain America still has been a very prominent member of the Avengers, making his big debut on the team in Avengers number four from 1964 after being frozen for a while, which I hear isn't as cool as it sounds. Get it? Cool? Sorry. But if he really was frozen in ice near the end of World War II, then how do you explain his comic book appearances after the war ended, but before his Avengers debut? Well, it's an interesting story, but as you would expect, it is kind of complicated. <laughs> Welcome to Comic Misconceptions, I'm Scott, and boy oh boy do we have some fun retcons to discuss today. By now I think we all have a general grasp on Captain America's origin, thanks to movies, cartoons, and even other YouTube channels, Eris. But as always, I'll go over an extremely brief summary of what you need to know. Captain America was created by Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, premiering in Captain America Comics number one from 1941. A scrawny Steve Rogers wanted to serve his country during World War II and volunteered to be the test subject for a super soldier serum that enhanced his body to the peak of human physical potential. He would then go on to fight Nazis and Japanese soldiers, among other enemies, with his sidekick, Bucky. We've talked before about how sales of superhero comics sharply declined after the war ended, and Cap's book was no exception. By issue number 74, the comic became known as Captain America's Weird Tales to try and jump on the bandwagon of what kind of comics were selling at the time. Now by issue 75, the entire book was canceled. About a decade later, Cap made his comeback in Avengers number 4 and tells a story of how he and Bucky were trying to stop an explosive-filled drone plane, but Cap fell off and into icy waters where he froze and was thawed out by the Avengers years later. But this, my dear friends, is only half the story because now we have this huge problem with Captain America's continuity. You see, before Cap was brought back in the Avengers, he was in a bunch of Golden Age comic books even after World War II had ended. For example, he and Bucky fought on the All Winners Squad with other Golden Age heroes like Namor, Human Torch, Toro, Wizard, and Miss America. This team was created by President Harry Truman in 1946, which was the year after Cap would be frozen in 1945. There's also a very short run on uh, Captain America comics from the 50s, where issues number 76 through 78 showed Cap and Bucky fighting communists before the book was canceled. There were other inconsistencies as well that we'll touch on in a bit, but you get the general idea. Cap was around in comics during times when his backstory said he was frozen in ice. So the question then is, if Captain America was frozen in 1945, then how do you explain his comic book appearances in the time between the war being over and his revival in the Avengers? The simple answer is that it wasn't Steve Rogers, but rather someone else standing in for the role of Captain America. This shouldn't come as much of a surprise since the mantle of Captain America has been taken up by more than a few people over the years, like Isaiah Bradley, Bucky, aka the Winter Soldier, and most recently Falcon, plus many others. What's kind of interesting is that it wasn't just one man standing in for Rogers during this time, but a few of them. The first one to take on the role after Rogers went missing in 1945 was a man named William Nasland, aka the Spirit of 76, which we can see in What If number 4. Nasland was inspired by Captain America to help with the war efforts, so he became the Spirit of 76, where he would help fight in any way that he could, like taking down Nazi spies, or even teaming up with Cap himself once. When Cap went missing and was presumed dead, President Truman asked Nasland to become the second Captain America, along with a kid named Fred Davis, who would become the new Bucky, who was really just a bat boy for the Yankees, though he did impersonate Bucky once before, so I guess that qualified him for the role. Together, they would fight alongside Namor, Human Torch, and the rest of the invaders, who later changed their name to the All Winners Squad. Nasland, aka the Spirit of 76, aka the second Captain America, didn't really last that long. He was killed a very short time later in that same comic book when an android crushed him to death. He was found by another hero named Patriot, who became the next Captain America. Now, there is a little bit more to the story behind Behind Patriot that is best explained in a miniseries from 2010 called Captain America Patriot. Naturally. Jeffrey Mace was a reporter who was inspired by Captain America to fight as a costume hero named Patriot during World War II, even joining a team of heroes called the Liberty Legion. The team splits up as the war comes to a close, and in 1946, Patriot finds himself in Boston during the same time that the All Winner Squad was on their mission where Naslin died. Androids were going to kill John F. Kennedy, replace him with robots, classic comic stuff. The team was all split up, and Naslin found himself in over his head. He sends up a flare, but not before being critically wounded 
by one of the androids. Patriot follows the flare and finds Nasland, who dies shortly thereafter. At the time, Patriot had no idea that Nasland wasn't the original Captain America. He believed that he just witnessed the death of his hero and inspiration. What he does know is that Cap's mission with the All Winner Squad isn't over yet. He puts on a spare costume and finishes the fight as Captain America. When the battle is over, Bucky, or rather the kid filling in as Bucky, spots that this Captain America isn't Naslin. Patriot unmasks himself and explains to the group what happened, but they all know that the Captain America name needs to live on, so Patriot is accepted as part of the team without hesitation. Patriot grows to become a respected member of the team and close friend to Fred Davis, aka Bucky number two. Unfortunately, Davis was shot one night. He survives, but retires from the role of Bucky. Patriot then takes up a new partner named Golden Girl, whose real name is Betsy Ross, and they end up getting married and settling down as they both retire from the superhero lifestyle as well. But the Captain America name must live on. So now we have yet another stand-in during the 1950s with William Burnside. As a boy, Burnside was devastated when he heard that Captain America disappeared. He dedicated his life to studying Cap and his exploits, even traveling to Germany to read up on Cap from the other side of the war. While reading through some files, he discovered the written down formula for the super soldier serum that enhanced Steve Rogers. Burnside took his findings to the president and demanded that he be made into a new Captain America and fight in the Korean War. He even went under plastic surgery so he could look and sound exactly like Steve Rogers. But the next day, the war was over and the president didn't want to introduce a new Captain America to the public for fear that it would shake up more controversy. So a disappointed Burnside went off to pursue a teaching career, still living under the name and face of Steve Rogers. One day he saw a younger student reading about Captain America as obsessed as Burnside was. He looked like Bucky and even called himself that on occasion, though his real name was Jack Monroe. They became friends and injected themselves with a super soldier serum so that they could fight in the names of Captain America and Bucky like they always had dreamed. This was the pair that fought against communism in the unsuccessful revival of Captain America in the 1950s. Burnside and Monroe took a turn for the worse when they realized that the super soldier serum alone wasn't the entire process that enhanced Steve Rogers. A crucial part of the process was the introduction of Vita Rays that the duo did not have access to. So they started experiencing side effects of this serum, namely paranoid schizophrenia, where they gradually lost touch with reality. They started thinking everyone was a communist and fought anyone they didn't think were, quote, pure-blooded Americans. They were out of control, so the government captured them and put them on ice indefinitely. Eventually, they were thawed out and came back as villains that Cap and Falcon fought in Captain America number 153 through 156, as well as popping up a few other times over the years. Notably, once being brainwashed and made the leader of a neo-Nazi group where he took the name of the Grand Director before he snapped back to reality and set himself on fire due to the overwhelming mental strain and realization that he was manipulated to oppose the very hero that inspired him. We've all been there. The last we saw of Burnside, he was hit by a truck and hospitalized. The real Captain America showed up to talk to him and he revealed that they had faked Burnside's funeral and are moving him to another hospital so that he can finally let go, and start a new life, and let Steve carry the full burden of Captain America. Burnside's Bucky, AKA Jack Monroe, also went on to have his own entire history as Nomad, Scourge, and eventually being shot and dying at the hands of the original Bucky. So that is just some of the interesting stuff that happened in order to cover up all of the Captain America appearances after the war had ended. And that's what I think makes comics so interesting. The ability to create full stories and characters from minor screw ups and inconsistencies. Trust me, this only scratches the surface of the crazy retcons behind Cap's origin. There are a bunch of things that I didn't have time to talk about, but I will put links in the description if you want to check out more fun trivia behind the history of Captain America. What do you guys think? Were all of these retcons necessary? Do you like having multiple versions of Captain America throughout history? And would you like to see them pop up in the MCU in some capacity? Personally, I think it would have been neat to have the Agent Carter TV show explore a replacement Captain America like Patriot or somebody and see how Peggy deals with all of that. But yeah. This video is a part of NerdSync Avengers Month. We're doing a whole month of Avengers and Marvel episodes in preparation for Age of Ultron. We've got plenty more to come that I'm very excited about. So make sure you hit that big sexy subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of it. Once again, I'm Scott. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram and we will see you right here on Friday for a tie-in video also about Captain America, one that's really cool, and more things that you thought you knew about comics. See ya.